Okay, so I'm going to start this one by going over some of the things that they changed from the games. Partially because I'm trying to convince myself of the theory that if I just shut my eyes and hold my hands over my ears and go la la la, then I can pretend that if it had just stayed closer to the games, it would have actually not been average. So rather than a vizier, we just have Ben Kingsley playing Scar, essentially. The Lion King. Am I the only one who thought that the kid, Dastian, really didn't look very cool doing the stunts? It was such a tease that we see him with the two swords and then he uses them once in one fight that lasts a minute or something. Is it just me or is the thing about it being the Sultan's brother kind of similar to the third game, you know, Prince of Persia 3D, aka the sequel that most people are trying to forget ever happened? Did anyone else notice that about half the time Garciv didn't actually close his mouth all the way, like he would always have some teeth showing? So the prince who formerly had no name is now known as Dastan. Seriously, how lame was it to call them Hassansins or something like that? Or go ahead and call them assassins. I guess they were trying to make it sound interesting, but they completely botched it. It just sounds like everyone who says it has a speech impediment. When Molina said that line about this is why I don't pay taxes, all the government killings. Was that like a dig at the CIA? I mean, I noticed several jokes that, you know, like the children might not understand. If it was, evidently they had guts. I wish they had applied some of those guts to the rest of the production. This movie has some of the most responsive crowds in the history of cinema. Seriously, early on when Tamina says, I'd rather die, they're all like, oh no, she didn't. They cheer exactly when they're supposed to, they laugh exactly when they're supposed to. They were either really, really excitable or someone was running around with cue cards. I've now doubled the reward on my brother's head. It does seem a bit odd that I'm doing this about a day after I promised the reward in the first place. It seems like I might as well just have promised the larger amount right from the start. Gotta love how after Dastan comes back to life, he's like, Oh, you pressed the dagger! Yeah, wasn't he kind of supposed to? Wasn't that your big plan? I mean, either that or your emo just kicked in. How dare Kingsley say that once he's Sultan, Dassin will back to the streets? Why, having someone stay in the horrible position that they were born into puts him on the same level as everyone who's ever run a country in the history of... Dastin, if the dagger is activated while stuck inside the hourglass, it will cause Armageddon. Unless the script says otherwise. Hey, the ending's like... The ending of the first one. Kinda. Oh, but with time turned back, we'll have lost everything that happened since the film began. Like, character development. <coughs> I'm sorry, I can't say that and keep a straight face. I can imagine that the final exchange between the prince and the princess might have had a lot of teenage girls squealing with glee. Not that that occurred in my theater, which... By the way, really wasn't terribly packed here two days after it premiered in that particular cinema. Anyway, I, on the other hand, merely chuckled because literally what he said was, I can't wait till we get to know each other so well that we can start mocking each other. Which, by the way, they've been doing for the entire movie. Kingsley's occasional overacting in this was an unintentional source of laughs. The biggest one for me was probably at the very end when Dastin confronts him and Kingsley's face seems to scream, yeah well, your breath smells like rotten eggs. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Prince of Persia. Such blandness will not stand the test of time. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.